Hello everybody, welcome. Today I want to talk about time. Time is a mysterious thing, but it's very palpable. We, we sense the time pen. We sense it. And there are some very interesting things about time. First of all, time is a, a regulator. It regulates things. For example, let's 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 give let me give you another example. If you're moving, let's say a sofa across the floor, you have to push on the sofa to move it. Well, that movement is regulated by by gravity, isn't it? You can't push the you can't push the chair 100 miles an hour. It's too heavy. It has inertia. It has weight. So the, the movement of it is regulated. If you go out to your car and find a nice safe place like on a racetrack or something like that, and then you press down on the accelerator as hard as you can, it's going to accelerate really fast and you're going to feel a push against you. Well, that push is a regulator. It regulates how it, it, um, it regulates change, doesn't it? And, well, so we understand that. The movement is regulated by, uh, let's call it gravity, whatever gravity is. Well, growth is regulated. And the regulation has is a mysterious time factor. Gro the growth, let's say, of a plant, it may be, be stimulated by warmth. You know, when the seed is in the ground, maybe warmth stimulates and then the presence of the sun, and then the sunlight helps the plant to grow. And the amount of sun and the amount of water may determine how much it grows. But it's also controlled by a mysterious time factor. Children grow at a certain rate. After year one, year two, year five, year 10, year 15, it, there's a, a time factor involved in growth that you can't hurry. And it, things occur in the proper timing. Well, there's some factor there that regulates that. And I say that what regulates Growth and decay is time. And I say that time is the same thing as gravity. The same force, the same background force that we sense as gravity or inertia, that regulates accel acceleration, it's there everywhere. And it also surrounds all matter and regulates them. Yesterday I made an audio, but the re it didn't record and it was really good. And I don't know what's going to come out now. I don't know if it'll be as good or even better, but I'll give it a try. We know that Christ put all things in subjugation to him. He overcame everything, even death itself. He overcame death. He took his body back. And when he reappeared as with his self that was being translated, but he was there. Physically, he was there. But he was able to, for example, but even before he, even before that, he was able to do some miraculous things like change water into wine or heal the sick or raise the dead. 
he would just suddenly vanish. There was a crowd there. People were going to try to seize him, to harm him, and suddenly he was gone. Now, maybe he just slipped away, but maybe something more was involved. But for sure, when he, when he rose from the dead and then he spent many days with the, his apostles, and he walked through walls, and he uh, vanished. And then, a most remarkable thing, when it was time for him to leave, he ascended into heaven. He literally ascended. His feet rose from the ground, and he ascended. So it's obvious that he has control over the laws, over, over gravity, and over um, matter, if he's able to walk through a wall. His, his, his apostles were sitting there, and he, he came walking through the wall. So what's this all about? Well, I want you to see that, uh, well, first of all, God is, is outside of time. He's the creator of time. He's the creator of all things. But he himself is outside of time in, in his timeless stillness. And he created everything. He created movement. Movement, tremendous force coming from a singularity. And this force wound round and round and round like around a ball of a ball of string where you wind around and round and round and the ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you had the universe ever expanding. And this force comes from in from every direction. So here we are, and this background force winding around and round and round, it it it's coming from every direction touches you from every direction. It surrounds you, esconces you, protects you, and regulates you from every direction. Try to accelerate really fast in your car, press down on the gas pedal, and it will restrain you, won't it? It's not going to let you keep accelerating to the speed of light. No, it will slow you down. It lets you it lets you accelerate, but it slows you down. It it regulates how much you can accelerate, and at a certain point, it said that's enough, no more. And the power of it grows, doesn't it? If you were to try to get near the speed of light, the the force coming back. So it's like Einstein's two two trains it, uh, um, passing through each other, ghost ghostly trains passing through each other. It's like that. This force is coming from all directions. So if you try to accelerate on one line of force, the opposing line of force then will regulate your change. So Christ overcame, became the master of, uh, of, all, of all force, including gravity itself. Now, I want you to think about time as being, as being, as being gravity, as being a regulating force. So we know that movement is regulated. Um, we know we can study physics, we can study velocity and acceleration and, and inertia and momentum. And mathematically, we can, we can see how it's regulated. But I want you to see that time is also a regulator. But time itself is not regulated. Time, it, 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 see, the, the background field, this mysterious background field going round and round, an ever-moving field, moving at tremendous speed, but without speed. It's movement, but it's not movement 
in, in, the, in a physical way. We sense its presence when it interacts with its created. See, it created everything. So everything that you see is made of it. And it, after it's made it, then it surrounds it and, and uh, mothers it and sustains it and regulates it. So, um, it is itself, it is, it is beyond time. It's the creator of time. It's the creator of movement. It's the creator of, of all matter, all change, all effects. It's, it's a one, it's a, it's a most wonderful medium. A, the, a background field, a, back, a medium that is a, the creator of all effects. Everything that you see, every, every chemical reaction, every sparkle of sunlight, every butterfly opening its wings, every breath you take, every beat of your heart, every, everything is, 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 is made possible and made by, by this background field, according to God's will, of course. So, if that is the case, then we, and we see that Christ was outside of time. Now, let's talk about time. Let's talk about it, about the human soul. The human soul is in a body, but the human soul is, is, uh, is, uh, non-material and it's, it's, um, it's spirit, it's metaphysical. And it, it belongs, well, we belong in our body, of course, but our soul belongs to our creator who himself lives in the timeless realm. And that's, and when you become more objective, when you learn the art of standing back and not being lost in things, not lost in your thoughts, not lost in food, not lost in something that you make too important, not lost in worry, not lost in feelings, when you are very aware and not lost in anything, then you are very close to this timeless realm. In fact, the soul can actually, can actually experience this timeless realm and be in this timeless realm where you are safe. And so, for example, the other couple of days ago, I was listening to a, to a, a, a very spiritual talk, very nice. And I listened to it and listened to it and listened to it. And it seemed like endless time went by as I was listening to it. And then I, I looked at the, uh, at the, uh, at the counter, you know, on the, device I was playing it on, and I'd only been listening for about 20 minutes. It seemed like an eternity. But on the other hand, sometimes you can look back at your life and you say, well, when was I, when was I doing that? It was 40 years ago. Where did time go? You see what I mean? It says in the Bible very beautifully in the in the Psalms. But Peter says it the best. He said, he said, he said, with God a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. Because see, he is outside of time, and you can be outside of time also. When to the extent that you learn the art of what I call meditation of getting out of your thoughts. Now, I said earlier that time is the regulator of change and decay. Well, for you who are getting better, who are learning to stand back and not resent other people 
and not judge other people and not make things too important. You're learning how to be how to be watchful. Your soul, see the role the the role of your soul properly is to be an observer in life to watch, to watch, and sometimes you under, you're given understanding, which comes from this timeless realm. It comes from your intuition, from your from your attachment to your creator. You're, and you understand, or you see, you understand. But otherwise, you go out, you watch, you observe. That's your proper role. Not to hate, not to want to take advantage. See? Not to be selfish and look, always looking for selfish advantage. But just to watch and then express the truth. That's all. Very simple. And do the things that are good for you to do and proper and just that's it that's all you have to do so when you are that way then you are outside of time and I think this is only speculation on my part but I suspect that uh, you will there'll be a change in how much you deteriorate maybe you won't deteriorate at all or you'll deteriorate more slowly Look at people who get deeply into something, like they get really sick, for example. That's getting deeply into something and something getting into you. Someone who's really sick with, you know, cancer or something. Well, afterwards, they look like hell. Uh, yesterday, there was a lady who, uh, the manager of a, of the produce department of a grocery store. And suddenly she was gone for months. Now she's back. She said, I, I didn't want to, yesterday was her first day back. I didn't want to, you know, uh, to, intru to be too nosy. She just said, well, I'm back. She said, she said I had some, something really wrong, but I'm better. She looks like hell. And she, she looks like she's aged 10, in a few months, she looks like she's aged 20 years. Well, could it be that when something takes us away from our ob stance of observer, could it be that when, during that time that we're lost in our rage, in hating our husband and divorcing him and, you know, that kind of stuff, in our illness, when we're lost in our, our wanting something too much, we want to prove something, and all you know, all the things we get lost in, or lost in our worries, or what, whatever you're lost in. Could it be that during those times, your 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 whole level of being is lowered down, and you become more subject to change and to decay, and it's always for the worse. Could that be possible? I think so. So there's much I could say on it. But uh, one thing I, I will mention, and that is a long time ago, people lived a lot longer. You remember back in the early days of the Bible, people like Noah and those types of people, they lived a long time. They lived hundreds of years. How is this possible? Well, people. some people say, well, you know, the atmosphere was different. Well, maybe it was, but maybe that's not all. Maybe their noble, the, nobi the closeness that they had to uh, see. It, it, we don't know that everybody lived. Maybe the really degenerate type of people, I'm sure there were quite a few of those around. Maybe they didn't live so long, but the noble ones, they lived a long time, maybe because they were so close to their to their creator. How many of you have, have known, you've read stories or seen movies or something, but you probably maybe even know in your life, someone who was at death's door, their life was a mess. But then suddenly they were given more time. Remember, God did that one time in the Bible, didn't he? Was it, was it with uh, 
Nebuchadnezzar, I can't remember who it was. Was it Nebuchadnezzar or who was it? He said, okay, I'll give you some more time. I'll give you another, I forget what it was, another five years or whatever. But do you know people who who are given a sec, what do they call that, a new lease on life? But then often they, they don't use it properly. What happens then, well, for a while they're better. See, see, what can happen is, look, you get really, really, really sick or something really, 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 really bad happens. You have a big heart attack or something. Well, then let's say, then you clean up your act. You, you get out of your food, you get out of your alcohol, you get out of your cigarettes, you get out of worrying about your work. You, you see, before you had been into those things and they got into you. Now you get out of all those, those things, you clean up your act and temporarily you're awake. Like you were when you were a little kid. Oh my God, you see the blue sky and the trees and the flowers and your dog, you love your dog and there's, there's everything is beautiful and now you clean up your act. You exercise, you don't eat too much, you don't drink, you don't smoke and so on. But then often you start to fall back into something that you get into. Maybe maybe you get into health food. See, it's possible to get too, too deeply into it and now it becomes too important and you lose that level of awareness and you fall back into matter, into the created thing, into the daydreams, into thoughts, into plans, into goals, into schemes, into substance. Even if it's a good substance, you get into it. See, even something as innocent as a carrot, a piece of bread, let's use a piece of bread, you can eat the piece of bread and get lost in daydreams. Or Christ told us to drink this and eat remembering me. If you eat it and hang on to your awareness, it's a totally different way of eating. It has a different effect on you. It, it then goes to sustain what's good about you, your relationship with your Creator. And you're not resenting other people and you're not making anything too important, more important than what you know is right in your heart. Then it feeds, it sustains that. But if you use the bread to escape, then in that escape, the bread has an effect upon you which causes you to deteriorate. So you see? So somehow time is involved in all of this. Time is involved. You, If you begin to meditate and uh, you will begin to experience a different relationship with everything, including time. Instead of time being your master, now you have a lot of time. Time to learn to discover of God, to see your mistakes that you made in the past and now to see them and uh, to now leave them behind and to change for the better and to develop the character that you will need so that one day when you drop the body, there's no more body, there's nothing else to escape into, then what you have at that moment the character that you have developed that that moment that's that's yours so you want to develop that character it'll put you in a good place not only here but but beyond